Greetings, my fellow Americans. This is probably illegal. I don't know why I decided to turn this camera on and film while I'm driving. I guess I'm just so happy to be driving and not availing myself of the absolutely fantastic world-class public transportation in Vienna. I'm happy instead to be in a car driving on a freeway in America. Listen, gang, I did a whole video that I was getting ready to post and then it didn't feel quite appropriate after um, you know, a big uh, election yesterday. So I thought I would take some time to say hello and changing lanes and address this uh, interesting moment we're in regarding the American political scene and how maybe as Zen practitioners and Buddhists, regardless of whatever side of the aisle we're on, we can uh, process and grow from or just deal with in an interesting way this ahem moment. Over and out, folks. I need to pull over and finish shooting this. I'm shooting this now from the Hartford Public Library. That's Hartford, Wisconsin, which is what? Like an hour plus some change, hour and 15 minutes outside of Milwaukee. Uh, maybe 15,000 people. I uh, grew up here. So this is the Hartford Public Library. This is the new uh, version or, or building that they put up in, I think it was 2011. And it's, I love to write in this building. It's such a gentle, majestic, quiet, new, fresh space with bright and cheery, intelligent librarians, a uh, very chill atmosphere, and I just wanted to share the space with you a, a little bit. I was uh, here yesterday at the Hartford Public Library, and there was voting here, and I looked at all the folks in the, in the standing in the line, and I just, my gut told me what wound up happening which was uh, that Wisconsin was going to go for Trump. After, after uh, Donald Trump got shot, I remember thinking, okay, it's, it's, it's his time. He's won. He's won. He survived that bloody ear wound, and he pumped his fist, and I knew he was going to get elected. I feel embarrassed walking around sh viewing my nonsense on the pond, middle-aged guy with a camera. Like, what are you, an influencer? Donald Trump is now the mainstream. Donald Trump is the mainstream. That's what I thought when he got his ear shot and he pumped his fist. I thought, holy shit, he won. He won. He's the mainstream. So to all of you who voted for Donald Trump, congratulations. You have the responsibility now. I, you know, you're not the, you're not the folks taking pot shots at the elites anymore. You're the elites. You're running the institutions. You're running the country. You won the popular vote and you won the electoral vote. I think from a, a Buddhist point of view, uh, if you voted for Donald Trump, you know, the question now is, um, how do you turn all that rage, all that um, concern about the border, all that concern around trans teenagers, that concern around the economy, that worry. How do you turn that into wisdom and compassion? Like, how do you pivot from a reactionary pose to something valuable? Because y'all motherfuckers are caretakers now for the country, you know? You guys won. You won handily. You won thoroughly. You won inside and out and backwards and forwards. And now you have responsibility. And being able to take care of something like a country, being able to make the right decisions and the hard decisions and not just kind of continually sow an attitude of dissent and puckish rebellion against the elites, but caring for things is a different ball game. And that's your 
you are now captains of the team in that ball game. So it's an interesting koan for y'all. Were you just, did you just elect a troll in chief? Or did you empower an actual statesperson who can make hard, difficult, compassionate, wise, intelligent, sharp, clever decisions to help this group of people that he's now in certain ways responsible for. I mean, there's so much energy and attention that goes into um, like just winning, but now that you've won, what comes next? Because like I said, y'all are the mainstream. I mean, you're the winners. You're not rebelling against the libtards anymore. You crushed them. Now what, bitches? Oh, oh, and to the liberals, to the Democrats, to this group. What can we say? What can we say? Like, I, there's so many ways that, uh, that you f***ing failed. That you dropped the ball on this one. I'm not going to go there. Oh boy, and to the liberals, the Democrats, uh, what? What can we say that isn't already being said? There's a lot of anger and a lot of frustration. And look, I'm going to level with you. I, I thought I would be better um, emotionally, no matter what the results of this election were. But uh, I, I, I woke up with a sunken heart, actually. I just woke up with a sunken heart. So there it is. Maybe it would have happened if Kamala had been elected. Maybe, maybe, but I did wake up with a sunken heart. Sunken heart. I know what that feeling is like that, that many of my Democrat friends are feeling today. It's, it's like, holy cow. It's like a, it's a punch to the solar plexus. One thing that occurs to me is that it's okay to lose. It's okay to lose. And we lost, if we're Democrats. We lost big, uh, bigly. It's okay to lose. Uh, it's okay. I understand that there are real... I understand all the implications and, and, and the actualities, the policies, um, and the implications, greater implications for democracy and, and a lot of the fears and concerns for the rights of, of people who have been marginalized. All, so many things maybe seem to be severely threatened now. Uh, so I understand that there are stakes, but it's still, it's okay to lose. Like losing, being at the bottom is part of uh, life. Sometimes you're on top and sometimes you're at the bottom. And when you're at the bottom, uh, in my own personal experience, um, Sometimes that's when you get f***ing real, real quick. Like you get really, really real. You get really real. Did I mention you get real? You get real. Like, and me, you know, I can imagine the DNC, the, you know, the De Democratic National, whatever you call it, the Demo, you know, they're getting real right now. They're getting real, you know? Like, there were things that could have been done. I didn't, I didn't feel like the Democrats gave it everything they had, you know? It seemed to me like they were playing not to lose instead of playing to win. And playing to win, playing like you have nothing to lose, is different than playing scared and trying to please everybody and dotting your I's and crossing your T's and being strategic and, you know, you lost. And it's a get real moment. And it's a time to, it's like a dark night of the soul moment when you sit down and you figure out who you are and what you truly stand for. And there's freedom in be being a loser. There's real freedom in it. When I was talking to my mom this morning, um, I was open to listen to what she had to say. I wasn't barking at her. I, and I found actually that I wind up agreeing with much of what she said. I wound up agreeing with much of what she said. I didn't feel attached to a lot of my usual positions. I mean, 
you know, I felt like a loser this morning. And there's wisdom, deep wisdom in loss when you've got nothing to lose because you've lost it all. Well, if you're a Democrat, you lost the popular vote, you lost the Electoral College. I mean, Joe Rogan is the mainstream now, okay? Um, RFK is the mainstream. Donald Trump is the mainstream. MAGA is mainstream. They won. The Democrats, liberals, we're the weirdos. We're the weirdos. They're not the weirdos, bro. We're the weir or <laughs> we're the weirdos. I consider myself more liberal than Republican or Dem or, or conservative for sure. Um, but I don't recognize myself in the Democratic Party anymore at all. And so uh, it's a it's 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 a moment of of not knowing. I did a video on don't know mind that I'm going to post next next week. As I said earlier, I was going to post it this week, but it but it but it just doesn't feel appropriate. So I'm going to post it next week. But um, yeah, loss is how you get strong. It's how you get strong. It's what happens now that determines future victories. Oh, hey, listen, man, I feel like, you know, whether you lost or whether you won, it's how you hold yourself now that counts. It's how you hold yourself, you know, lower your blood pressure. Hey, one of the good things about Trump winning is that my mom's blood pressure is not going to skyrocket. So that's good. <laughs> you know, maybe all our, our boomer MAGA parents are not going to have heart attacks today. So that's one a positive thing. How we hold ourselves with grace and humor and 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 guts. I mean, the you know the liberals have to learn how to how to fight and not be so scared of being called names and not being so reactionary and and wimpy, you know. And maybe the conservatives have to learn. How to be not so mean and name cally and trolly and vicious and ugly and smug? Can you fucks handle that? I don't know. I was on Twitter this morning. The gloating amongst the consigliere of the conservative, our, our conservative ruling class right now, was quite infuriating. I don't think the right gets it. Y'all have had your first day towards a, a long but eventual path to total failure. When you have your moment, when you're at your greatest moment of victory, that's the first day of your, of, of your, of your journey towards where the Democrats are at today, which is loss. Like why, where, why, where you all are waving your flags in the faces of the blue hairs and tw atting them with nasty little comments on Twitter, they're getting their sword. The libtards are finding their swords. And it's going to be four years or eight years. They will be regrouped. They will be strong. The centrist Democrat message of now will be a thing of the past. And so it behooves you to transcend your victory and maybe counterintuitively behave with a little bit of compassion and concern for the other side. And, you know, liberals, I mean, maybe it behooves us to stop using the F word, to stop using all kinds of epithets to describe our political opponents, to stop. I've also been on Twitter watching, the, I'm sorry to laugh, but watching the meltdowns because all these conservative uh, pundits are posting liberal meltdowns. And literally it's like women in cars grabbing their hair, literally pulling out of their heads and screaming for like five minutes straight. I don't think that's the best approach to this, our new ruling conservative class. I, I don't think it's going to be very effective. So I think we need to, liberals need to stop whining and start getting tough and start learning how to fight and start learning how to think and start learning how to argue and start learning how to speak our minds instead of being worried that we're going to offend people. Okay, start billing 
building um, coalitions instead of fracturing into smaller and smaller diversity and affinity groups. It just doesn't work. Liberals have become snotty elitists. Really? Beyonce pulled the lever for Kamala? I didn't know she was going to do that? I mean, I think when we have the... Like, liberals really have start begun to seem like just total and complete elitists. Like, liberals got to get real. It's time to get real. I don't know what I'm talking about. None of this has to do with Buddhism. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I got political. And you know what? I'm probably going to delete this. I, I, have, I have made so many of these videos where I start getting political. And I delete every one of them, right? Because it's always like I wind up slamming liberals and slamming conservatives. I don't think that's very effective. I just, I guess I'm channeling a lot of energy today and I know you're feeling a lot of energy today. Listen, I remember one time I was at the monastery and it was like today, it was very, very cold. And I went to the monk who was supposed to be keeping the Zendo warm. And I started, uh, I got on my high horse and I was arguing with him that as the officer in the monastery hall who's tasked with making sure we don't freeze to death, he needed to do his job. And I was really on my high horse. Kind of how I am when I start yelling at a, my super progressive relative or when I yell at my conservative mother, right? I've always got a high horse to jump on. Man, no matter who I'm with, I got like a million, I got a stable of high horses. And I can pick on any, I can pick any one of those high horses and jump on it. So I was on my high horse in any event that time with this monk. And you know, he stopped me as I was ranting that he wasn't doing his job. Really, I was just freaking cold, okay? But I was making a moral mission out of, out of, out of, condemning him for not doing his job and and you know at one point he just stopped me he just stopped me it was literally he put up his hand and his hand told me to shut the up right and so I did because he was a senior monk and he was about to hand me my hat and he just paused for a moment and he said well I guess you need to find your sword. <laughs> this is not an eloquent man. This is a man who, when he was a teenager, dove into the sh sh shallow end of a swimming pool and was never the same afterwards. He was not going to win any Nobel Prizes for high IQ. Let's put it that way. And his words, nonetheless, were incredibly wise. When you're in a dark moment, you got to find your sword. When you're down, when you've lost, find your sword. Your sword is not in name-calling. Your sword is not in, in screaming about how you're going to leave the country. The sword is not in using the same epithets to describe people. Okay, that's not your sword. So, liberals, Democrats, what is your sword? What's your sword deep down? In a moment of silence, there it is gleaming at the bottom of the ashes of the current moment. And I think maybe in these moments, if you're conservative, you've got to find your heart. You gotta find your heart, you know, because it's really hard to see how a a guy who trolls an entire nation can can lead uh, without a whip, uh, you know, and you you can't. You can't be a, an a, a effectively take care of your responsibilities uh, if you if you have no heart. 
And, and so, yeah, you, you know, if I, as I said earlier, conservatives won. So within the current moment, like, uh, is it just a whip that's going to be cracked? Or are there kind words and open words? Um, is, there a, is there a brain behind this, this current leadership? Or is there just a rebellion against overreach from liberals and elites, cultural elites, coastal elites? Is it just a slap to the face? You gave the slap. What happens after the slap? That's what maybe the conservatives can, can think about. What happens after the slap? And I'm not just running down conservatives here. I was kind of expecting that slap. And like I said, I thought I would be a little bit happier when it arrived, but I felt like crap this morning because I know there's so many people that are so upset. And uh, my arm is getting tired. I've been holding this phone up for a while, so I'm going to sign off. Um, much love. Find your sword. Find your heart. Take a deep breath. <sighs> it's all going to be okay. <laughs> it's all going to be okay. Don't let the bastards get you down. And if you're not down, don't be too full of yourself because your time on the loser's bench is getting queued up and it's waiting for you. Welcome to Hartford. What do you think? Should I jump? <laughs>